Welcome to the Bentley Systems training course where you will learn how to design steel connections using RAM Connection Standalone. RAM Connection Standalone is used for the design and detailing of steel connections. It can design individual shear, moment, brace, splice, and truss connection types to a variety of different steel design codes. In this particular video, we are going to be focusing on the workflow for assigning a moment end plate connection to both beam column flange and beam column web joints within RAM connection standalone. We will now turn our attention to our RAM connection standalone application, where as you can see, we have several different joints already set up that contain both shear and moment reactions at their intersection points. For this particular video, we're going to show you how to design a moment end plate connection for both a beam column flange and a beam column web joint configuration. Let's go ahead and get started with the beam column flange and I'm going to select joint number two. When you're ready to start your connection design process, we can select the design tab in the ribbon toolbar and then click on the assign icon. Now moment end plate is a combined connection in RAM connection standalone, meaning that it can resist both shear and moment forces at the joint. All of the joints within RAM connection are organized by the types of forces they resist. So here we can see that we have some shear connection templates, some moment connection templates, and also combined. Again, these are the ones that can resist both shear and moment. We're going to go ahead and select a combined connection for this exercise. And this connection type is available through both a basic and smart connection workflow. We're going to go with a basic connection workflow and we're looking for the acronym MEP for moment end plate. As you can see, we have several different configurations available here for a moment end plate. And I'm going to go ahead and select the second one. This will be a flush moment end plate. I'm going to select my connection template and then click on the assign icon. Here we can see that the shear and moment connection has been successfully assigned, so we'll go ahead and click close. Now after assigning a connection template, the first thing I do is I take a look in the joint selection area. Here I will be able to see the controlling interaction ratio and the status of the connection design. In this area, I could see that for this particular connection template, that the interaction ratio is less than 1.0, and it is in green, meaning that a successful connection design was achieved with no errors or warnings. Now let's go ahead and select a beam column web configuration. And for that, I'm going to select joint number four. Now for the beam column web situation for a moment end plate, you would need your column to be a hollow structural section, which it is for this particular joint. Now that we've selected our joint, let's go up to the design tab in the ribbon toolbar and again click on the assign icon. What we're going to notice is that RAM Connection Standalone does know what type of joint we're trying to design right now. So you can see our filters are already set up to beam column web. Now a Moment end plate is available in both a basic and smart connection workflow, but specifically for a beam column web, we want to go to the smart connection area. Again, this is a combined connection, and I'm going to select the MEP HSS connection template. Once we're done, let's go ahead and click the assign button, and then we'll close out of the connection assignment dialog. So here for a moment end plate attached to an HSS tube type section, we can see that the moment end plate was attached to another plate that has been welded to the HSS column. To get more information on any of your connections within 
RAM connection standalone. You can visit the connection pad. To access the connection pad, you're going to select the joint you want to take a look at. Go to the design tab in the ribbon toolbar and click on the edit icon. Since this is a combined connection, that option will be available and we'll go ahead and click on it. This will bring up your connection pad where you'll be able to see the status of your connection design. You'll be able to review your connection report and then also make any changes as needed for your moment and plate connection. Finally, you are able to view and export a DXF for each of the connections within your model. Now for this particular connection, I can see that I did pass the code check and it is in green, meaning that no errors or warnings were encountered. So at this point, I'm gonna just close out of my connection pad. The last joint in this particular model that we're going to be designing a moment end plate connection for is joint number three. Now this particular joint is a beam column flange joint with tapered sections assigned to both the beam and the column. This makes this joint a good candidate for the moment end plate knee connection type. To start your connection design process, go to the design tab in the ribbon toolbar and click on the assign icon. Now moment end plate knee style connection types are available as a combined connection, meaning that they're capable of resisting both shear and moment forces. And it is available through both a basic or smart connection workflow. Let's go with a basic connection workflow for this exercise. And we'll go to the section for combined shear and moment connections. Now, as you can see, we have several different moment end plate knee style configuration options available to us. For this exercise, let's go with the moment end plate knee vertical extended upwards option as our first attempt. I'm gonna select the connection type, click the assign button, and then finish this by clicking close. Now in the joint selection area, I'm gonna notice that the status of the current connection design will be displayed. Now, although the interaction ratio for the designed connection is less than 1.0, it is in yellow, meaning that a warning was encountered during the connection process. Let's go ahead and visit the connection pad to rectify the warning and to get more information regarding the warning. To do that, go to the design tab in the ribbon toolbar, click on the edit icon, and then select combined connection. Now within the connection pad, you can review your results, your DXF drawing, and you can also modify any of your end plate parameters. Before I make any modifications, I'm gonna visit the report so I can get some additional information regarding where the warnings were issued. Now here I can see that the transverse stiffener length did provide a warning. The weld size for the transverse stiffeners also provided a warning. And then I also have a warning that the beam flange does not fit on the connection plate. I'm gonna scroll down to see if any additional information has been reported. And then I'm gonna close out of the connection pad. Now that I have some more information, I'm gonna go ahead and modify a few of the parameters in the end plate window in the connection pad. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a look at the gauge distance. This is the center to center spacing. And I'm gonna change this to six inches. Next, let's go ahead and take a look at the horizontal edge distance. And let's bump this up to two and a half inches. I'm going to proceed on to the stiffener area and I'm going to increase the stiffener width. I'm going to customize the plate material using the United States database. I'm going to customize my welding electrodes, again, using the United States database. 
And then finally, I'm gonna take a look at the weld size. And I'm gonna bump this up to a quarter inch weld. The last thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a look at the transverse stiffener length. Now here I can say that by default, the full depth option was selected. I'm gonna go ahead and unselect that and enter a transverse stiffener length, which for this exercise, I will select 10 inches. Now once I've made all those changes, I can now take a look at the ribbon toolbar in the connection pad and see that my interaction ratio is less than 1.0 and it's now in green, meaning that no errors or warnings were encountered through the design process. The last thing I'm gonna do while in the connection pad is take a look at the DXF view of this connection and I can review any of the drawing information or export this DXF. Now at this point, I did make some changes to the connection. So I'll go ahead and click on the save icon and then I'm gonna finish off by closing out of the connection pad. I should be able to see in the joint selection area the modifications I made and the updated status of the connection design. At this point, this concludes our process for assigning a moment end plate knee connection in RAM connection standalone. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you and see you next time.